Maxine Stitzer, Principal Investigator of the Mid-Atlantic Node, explains the mission of the Clinical Trials Network to disseminate research-based drug abuse treatment into clinical practice. Dr. Stitzer shares with the audience how clinicians, scientists, and experienced trainers who are part of this NIDA SAMHSA blending initiative have worked to create user-friendly treatment tools and products to facilitate evidence-based practices in frontline clinical settings. This, this uh, event, in, if you, in case you don't know, is a, a joint effort between the uh, Linda Oni's ATTC, the Addiction Technology Transfer Center, the Central East um, aspect of that group, and, and the uh, Mid-Atlantic Node of the Nine Clinical Trials Network. <clears throat> and I'm here representing the Clinical Trials Network <clears throat> because I'm the PI of the Mid-Atlantic Node. And I'm going to just start the morning by telling you a little bit about <clears throat> the CTN and how we got here today in terms of uh, <clears throat> being able to present you these blending products. Ah, very good. So what, what are we talking? Why are we? What are we talking about here? Blending? What are we talking about? Blending? What is this all about? So what are they? What are blending products? What they are is that they're toolkits, basically, for science to practice communication. That's kind of a broad and abstract definition. Of course, you want to know exactly what's in these toolkits, and that's what we're going to find out today. They have been developed through by collaboration between the CTN and the ATTCs, and what they provide is training and technical support for the adoption of evidence-based practices, which um, I assume is one of the reasons that you all are here, because you're interested in adopting evidence-based practices at your agencies and in your own work. Um, the Drug Abuse Treatment Clinical Trials Network is uh, something that it's, it's a nationwide organization funded through the National Institute on Drug Abuse that has three missions, and these are basically the missions that I'm showing you here. The first one is to form an academic uh, partnership, a partnership between academic and clinical providers. So I would be an example of an academic person being a, on the faculty at Johns Hopkins and conducting research on, treat, on drug abuse treatment and you all would be examples of clinical providers um, in the community. And this is a partnership that we're, we've been trying to develop and have really developed quite successfully over the years. And the second part of the mission, which is really our main mission, is to conduct treatment-relevant research in real-world settings. So I don't know whether anyone's here um, that has been a part of the research from CTN and Live, uh, they participated in one study, I know. I don't know that anyone else has. But we do conduct our treatment research out in the real world clinics uh, with some of our partners. And then the third arm of the mission is to disseminate or promote adoption of study findings that are positive. We would have loved to um, encourage the use of findings that, of course, didn't show efficacy. Now this is a picture of the current structure of the National Clinical Trials Network. There are 13 what we call nodes scattered around the country. And you can see that uh, there are three of them on the West Coast. There's one in New Mexico. There's one in Texas. There's one in Florida. There's one in Ohio. There's one in Pittsburgh. And then there's a whole string um, up and down the East Coast of which we are one, Mid-Atlantic. Is there a, is there a, I don't know if there's a pointer on this, but you can see Mid-Atlantic there in, uh, on the right-hand side. So this is, this is the, the geographic dispersal of the CTN nodes. And by the way, it's interesting, which we don't have today, but to look at a, to layer on top of this, the dispersal of the ATTCs, because they also have a network all around the country. And the idea is that each of these clinical trial nodes is partnered with one of the regional ATTCs to do the kind of thing that we're doing here today. This is a uh, sort of diagram of what an a, a CTN node looks like. And the main point, the RRTC, that's Regional Research and Training, training Center. Thank you, Christine. Regional Research. <laughs> I'm forgetting my own acronyms. <laughs> um, that would be, I guess, the academic faculty group there in partnership 
with all these various entities in the community, mainly substance abuse treatment programs, but we've also expanded our partnerships to include medical settings, HIV treatment settings, primary care facilities, and different other um, entities. Well, the CTN's been around since 1999. We, a couple years ago, celebrated our 10-year anniversary and published a whole volume of uh, sort of retrospective uh, articles about the research that's been conducted. We've conducted over 50 studies. It's really been an amazingly productive uh, enterprise. There's been about 150 papers published, and eight of these blending products, only a couple of which were going we're able to highlight at any given session, but we're hoping in future sessions to highlight others. Uh, how, you might be wondering how research studies are selected and conducted in the CTN. Um, this is a little vague, but basically we try to come up with, with concepts that uh, are formulated through the research practice collaboration that are based on scientific merit and innovation. You know, what is it that we would like to know? What is it that we need to know? What's new and different? Um, something that is clinically relevant. This is something we really try to keep an eye on in the CTN, and this is why we have the close partnerships with clinical providers, because the providers have input into what studies are going to be conducted and also how they're conducted. Because we want clinical relevance, and, and ideally, uh, the, studying things that have a potential for sustainability and adoption in the real world community of treatment providers. Um, the studies, as I mentioned, are conducted in community treatment clinics with, of course, support from the academic partners. And this allows us to have studies with very large samples, hundreds of people, hundreds of participants in the studies, which gives it a lot of generality, as well as regional diversity. So this is a really good thing because, I don't know if you, the distinction of course is uh, when researchers conduct studies in a single clinic or a small academic, well-infrastructured research clinic, the generality may not be as great as when you conduct it in the real world with hundreds of real world participants, substance users. Uh, this is just gives you some idea, a little overview of the types of studies that have been conducted. They've included studies on behavior therapies, including motivational interviewing, um, motivational enhancement, and also motivational incentives, and these are the two that we're actually going to be highlighting today. There's been a whole boatload of studies about buprenorphine. I'm sure many of you are familiar with buprenorphine, which is the, an alternative medication to uh, methadone. And uh, they, we looked at long versus short treatment, treatment in adolescents, treatment in prescription opioid users, the role of counseling in buprenorphine. There's been a lot of research. We've looked at HIV prevention and treatment, uh, rapid testing, treatment engagement, sex counseling, and then uh, also a series of studies on smoking cessation and substance users, which I hope we're going to be getting to soon, um, one day on in the dissemination realm. By the way, if you'd like more information on the studies themselves, you can find everything presented at the CTN Dissemination Library.org. You can find the original studies. Um, so when we get positive findings in CTN studies, this provides support for the, for the intervention as an evidence-based practice. Um, I think you're aware that evidence-based practice is really, what it stands for is something that's been shown to be efficacious and effective in research studies. But um, it would be wonderful if every finding that was positive was automatically somehow adopted by clinical practitioners. This, of course, does, is not the way it works. Adoption has to uh, be underpinned by something that's feasible and sustainable. It has to be seen as clinically valuable, and it has to be supported by the administration and the clinical staff. So we're really at um, kind of the first step of adoption of evidence-based practices, which is dissemination. In other words, you have to know about these things before, as a first step, before it would be possible to adopt them. And I, I'm sure many you all do know about these practices, um, but you know, today we're here to show a little more in-depth what the CTN ATTC collaboration can provide in the way of support for training for the 
So that brings us back to the blended products and really the end of my remarks. So thank you for your attention. Thank you for coming. Have a good day.